Okay guys, welcome back to part two of the BMW E60 M5 teardown. Now, you would have seen on a previous video, I had removed the plenums, but we now have got a lot further than that. Now, obviously I wasn't gonna bore you with removing simple things that many of you guys have seen me remove hundreds and hundreds of times, which are basic on the E60. So I've moved all them parts and got ready for the parts that you guys want to see that relate purely to this car only. Now, when I say purely to this car, realistically, it does relate to this car and it's a common problem on these engines, but this will also relate for all your cars because this part can fail on many of you guys' cars and none of you are even aware. Unless you run live data on a diagnostics tool, you will not even be aware this is actually even failing because of the way they actually fail in the situation on the engine. Many guys won't even be aware because as many of you guys know, BMW on these model of cars removed the a coolant temp gauge on your car so you will not be none the wiser of how your car is actually running so i'm therefore going to show you what we're going to be replacing today and the reason why i'm replacing it so let's get on to the video god damn get it done will you when the blow up now everybody's so unusual with it shit but said times in his rhymes because his memories we running through new york so you Okay guys, so as you'll see here, this is the BMW E60 M5. And if you can see, I've removed all the air filters that go along the side, which is the K&N Typhoon system. I've removed all the coolant fan and I've removed all the coolant as well, which I've drained out from the radiator, which is very simple with a bleed screw down the bottom, which drains all the coolant. I've also released all the pipes that are down here, which are for the thermostat housing. I've removed a lot of different things to gain access to all the plugs for the eccentric shafts on the um, E60 M5 also. Therefore, we are gonna be targeting the thermostat housing on this car. Now, the thermostats are a very, very weak point. And when I read the live data, I found that the thermostat on this car was not opening to its full maximum efficiency, therefore undercooling the engine. Now, what was actually happening is this is actually stuck open. Therefore, the fan is constantly coming on. Not only is the fan all coming on, it's also um, dropping the temperature when it's at idle. So the temperature keeps dropping, dropping even lower than it should be. It's not sitting bang right in the middle of 75 Celsius, 95 Celsius. It will drop itself as the car is idling. And then obviously the car will go back into cold loop to try and rewarm up the car and rewarm up the cat. Therefore, I need to change the thermostat on this car to stop that happening. So we are gonna go ahead and remove the thermostat housing and gain access to the thermostat. I do have a new one and this is a common issue. So if you do own an E60 M5, make sure you actually check this because this can be causing a lot of your issues on your E60 M5. Now you will see, as I said, I've removed all the pipes, which are right here. We're not gonna put them back in just yet. We are gonna be taking out the thermostat housing. Now I believe these are a 30 mil bolt. These are maybe eight or 10. And we've got one just down here as well to release the whole thermostat housing, which we're gonna go ahead and do. Now we're going to release the 14 mil bolt from the top of the thermostat housing. Now this is a banjo bolt, so it, one, it won't be big, and two, it might have an O-ring as well, which it does, which is right here. We'll have to take that off and just remove that out of the way. So now we're just going to release the other 10 mil. If you see there, that one's a lot shorter than the other two we removed. So I'll put that here, and now what we're going to do is just wobble the thermostat housing to get it out. And just like that it's now out of the car and you'll see there the rubbers are a bit perished on the thermostat housing itself nothing that i can't put new ones on i do have new ones to put on if they won't reseal but that's the thermostat which we're now going to be removing we're going to have to use pliers to actually pull that out and we're going to put the new one in i believe this is a genuine bmw part truly because on the receipts i've got it was changed under warranty by bmw around 60k so I'm now going to be changing it again because it is a known problem that these actually fail. So if you can see, I just use a pair of pliers just to pull it up. If you can see, it comes out nice and easy as you just lift it up. You want to make sure all around here is clean because obviously the new one's going to seal into that place right here. So do make sure you clean up the area before putting the new thermostat into the housing. Otherwise, it won't make a tight seal and therefore you end up with a leak. And you don't want to be going back down here and having to remove your plenums to do it all over again. If you look at the thermostat clearly, you can see inside it's a bit worn out. You can see it's all yellowish. Uh, the thermostat is a bit 
gone before it's time. Um, so therefore, uh, that's why I'm replacing it luckily. You can see all there, all the yellow on it. Um, very, very badly colored. And that's why I'm actually down here changing this one over to a new one. Now I do have the new thermostat right here, which is a Mal one. So we are gonna be changing over to this one. You'll see here the difference on this one. This one's very clean, um, brand new. This is a Mal one, so it's a very good brand. And I've also replaced the O-rings on here as well for the new ones, because I had the same one, so I've just replaced them. I didn't feel comfortable putting the old O-rings back into the place because it slots in and blocks, obviously, the water outlets and inlets. So therefore, I didn't want to risk that. So now we've got that, all you're going to want to do is slot that in. Obviously, you are going to probably want to grease this up just to make it slot into position. And that's what I said to you about cleaning it up. Then oil it up or grease it just to make this slot in perfectly so it causes a nice tight seal. And just like that, you see there how it's now sealed completely in. Therefore, now we're going to put the thermostat housing back on. You do want to be careful here that you locate it back properly. So now we've got all the 10 mils tightened down. We're now going to go ahead and put the other corner line back on with the banjo bolt. And that's the thermostat housing complete on that side. So remember one of the copper washers go underneath. Then you want to put the cap and put the banjo bolt on top and start screwing it down. Make sure all your wires are correct the right way before you connect it all up. Now we're gonna put the radiator outlets back on. Now I would stress to make sure you check everything before you even think of putting everything back on and refilling up your coolant. Because if you do have a leak, you will be coming back down here to replace this again or the seal. So do make sure you check everything properly before you bolt everything back down and finish the whole job. Okay guys, so as you've seen there, I've now replaced the thermostat and I've now shown you how to remove the thermostat housing on your BMW E60 M5. If you have the S85 engine or S65, this will relate to you and they are positioned in the same place. Now, it's not really a hard job to actually get to, just the plenums off and the thermostat right there. Now, I think BMW knew this was gonna fail a lot because of how much power the V10 actually produces. These things are designed to actually fail. Obviously, when they fail, the most common way they usually fail is where they stuck open. Now, this thermostat has been replaced already twice in its life, and this is now the third time. Now, it is notorious for eating through thermostats, these cars, because of how hot they get and how hot they've got to be to warm up that whole car's temperature, especially when you're driving it in a hot climate, especially here when we get um, a heat wave. Obviously, these cars run very hot, and obviously, the thermostats just get eaten through the more you actually drive them. Now, it is an easy job, and if you are looking for a guy to actually do this. I hope this video will actually show you how to actually gain access to it. I do recommend, however, to make sure you change the O-rings on the thermostat housing. Otherwise, if that leaks, as I said, you'll, you will be back down there. Just make sure your bolts are completely tightened and obviously all your hose are connected before you put your coolant back in. But I hope this video is actually gonna help a lot of you guys. Thank you very much for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here, and I've got a lot more coming on this car on the E60 M5 later on. So I hope you guys actually enjoy this video for now. Thank you very much and goodbye.